Okay, lesson 5.2. Uh, this isn't too hard of a lesson, but it is one that takes a fair bit of practice. So I'm going to try and work pretty quickly through this and then give you lots of time to practice the skills. So we're going to be multiplying and dividing different radical expressions now and understanding the rules for them. Uh, we already kind of have the basic rule, which is when you're multiplying two radicals, if you said had, um, say, root of 4 times root of 3, that would be the same thing as root of 4 times 3, which is root of 12. Uh, so you could kind of combine them that way, or you could separate them that way. And that's actually, we've been doing more of the separating. If you have root of 12, you would turn it into this, and then you would turn root of 4 into just 2, and you'd say it's 2 root 3. Um, but we're just going to look at that with a few more complicated examples. So in general, when you're multiplying radicals, uh, you have coefficients m and n, m and n, and you have radicands a and b, uh, and they're in the same size index root. It's the kth root. Uh, if it's not the same size index root, then you can't do anything. Then they're different. Um, but if they're the same, then what this says is you multiply the coefficients and you multiply the radicands. So if you do those two things, then you should be able to get it just fine, as long as the index is the same. So let's try that. In the first one, multiply the coefficients. That makes negative 12. On the inside, you multiply the radicands, 2x times 6, which is 12x. Uh, now this can be simplified. Um, you can divide 12 by 4, so it's actually going to be root 4. I'll do it slowly this time. Root 4 times root of 3x. Uh, and then the 4 can come on the outside as a 2. So it's going to be negative 24 root 3x is how you would get to the end of that one. Uh, and one thing, if you're in the 20-1 thing that is going to be hard to remember, is I want you to state restrictions every single time in this unit. Uh, we've talked about restrictions in the past. Every time it's an even-powered root, an even-indexed root, uh, you, it has to be positive. So 3x has to be positive, so x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Um, yeah, that's our restriction in this one. x is not allowed to be a negative number. So we'll try and remember that every time. Next one, so we're going to rainbow this in. In the first one, we have 35 root 15. In the second one, we have 42 root of 9. Okay, and then we want to tidy this up a little bit. Uh, root of 9 is just going to be 3, so the end number is just going to be negative 42 times 3. Uh, the front one, what does 15 divide by? Uh, nothing, actually. So this is as far as it goes. None of our good numbers. It doesn't divide by 4, it doesn't divide by 9, uh, no, it's going to be as far as it goes. So the final answer is going to be 35 root 15 minus 126. Uh, restrictions on this one? Uh, there's no variable, so there's no restrictions. Restrictions are only if you have a variable. They let you know what the variable is allowed to be and what it isn't allowed to be. This is just a number. This is a number, and it's a real number, because you can take the square root of 15. But if you take the square root of 15, you'll have an approximation. If you leave it root 15, you have an exact. So this is an exact real number. Uh, if you took the root of 15, you'd have an approximation decimal. Okay, next one. Now this is a little bit harder. We have to FOIL. Uh, we've all had lots of practice FOILing at this point. So first is going to be, um, well actually this is a different question that I have on my sheet here. Oh no, here it is. Uh, the first one is going to be 72 root 10. I'm assuming we can all do the multiplication. Multiply the coefficients. Multiply the radicants. Uh, it is the same size index, so it works just fine. Uh, my outside terms is going to be 8 times 6, 
which is going to be 48 root 20 uh, positive. My next one is going to be inside, so it's going to be negative uh, 45 root of 5. The root of 5 is still there, even though there's nothing to multiply against it. You can think of both of these things, the 9 and the 5, as coefficients. So they multiply, and then the root 5 stays at the back. And then my last term, negative 5 times 6 root 10. So that's going to be negative 30 root 10. Okay, which ones of these can simplify? Or can we even collect any like terms? Oh, we do have some like terms, actually. So we're looking to collect like terms, and we're looking to simplify them. Actually, I like to simplify them before I collect like terms, uh, just because then maybe there's more like terms to collect. Although you don't really want to simplify twice. Uh, it's a bit tricky, actually. Maybe it's better to simplify first. So 32 minus, uh, sorry, 72 minus 30 is equal to 42 root 10. Uh, and then we have our two other terms. Now, which of these can be simplified? The root 5 is as far as it goes, so this one's good. Uh, root 20, that's going to divide by 4. And 10 doesn't divide by 4, um, doesn't divide by 9, obviously, so that's as far as it goes as well. But this one's going to simplify down a bit. It's going to turn into 4 times 5, which is a 2 on the outside. So ordering these things, uh, this is going to equal uh, 42 root 10. Uh, 48 times 2 is 80, 96 root 5 minus 45 root 5. Uh, and that's why we like to simplify them. This is the entire point. Now we have another set of like terms that can simplify. So our final answer is 42 root 10. And we had 96 of them. We lost 45 of them. So 96 minus 45 is 51. Positive. Good. Restrictions. Uh, nope, there's no variable. Uh, these are real numbers. So yeah, that's just a real exact answer. So we should be good. Uh, one last example before we get on to division. Uh, it's just a third root one now. So I think it's pretty much the same. It's just we have to know how to simplify third roots, which can be a bit harder. So we want a rainbow again. First, let's just expand it out. So coefficients, 9 times 1 is 9. Third root of 2w times 4w is 8w squared. Do not forget the squared. That can be a little bit confusing. 2w times 4w, 8w squared. Okay, 9 times 7 is uh, 63. Third root of... Uh, 2w times 28 is 40, 56w. Okay. Now, that's a pretty good first step. Now we need to simplify it further. So, we're looking for 3 of something. Uh, something times itself 3 times to pull out. So now we actually want to see if we can divide these by any of the perfect cubes. Or you can do the prime factorization method. Um, I haven't actually gone over that, so I'm going to actually do prime factorization both times. The 8's fairly easy, it's going to be the 2 one, but let's do it. Uh, so 8 breaks down into 4 times 2, and that breaks down into 2 times 2. So in prime factorization, you break it down constantly looking for numbers that multiply it till every single tree ends in a prime. Now, what this says is every time you have 3 of something, you can pull one of them on the outside. So we have 3 2's. So I can pull one of them on the outside, and that equals 18. 2 times 9. Uh, and we still have the third root of w squared. If there were three w's, we could pull one w on the outside, but there's only two of them, so it's that. Uh, now let's try 56. This one's a little bit more relevant. We probably could have tell, to, uh, figured out 8 right away. But 56, let's break it down. Well, that's going to be 2 
times, uh, what is that, 28? 28 is 4 times uh, 5, 6, 7. 7, 14, 21, 28, yep. Which is 2 and 2. And 7 is prime. So that's as far as you go with that one. Uh, 7 is a prime number. So the 7 is not going to be able to come on the outside because there's only one of them. Same thing if there was two 7s. It would still be stuck on the inside. Only when you have three of something can you pull one on the outside. So we have three twos, so I'm going to get rid of all of them, and I'm going to pull one two onto the outside. So two times 63 is 126. What did I leave behind? The only thing I left behind in this one is the 7. So it should be 7w. Okay. Uh, now we have to state restrictions. So all this is true as long as w can be any number. Uh, in this one, there's actually two different restrictions, but they're going to overlap. So in this one, you have to have a w which is, oh, it's actually third root. Forgot. Third root, no restriction. You can have negative numbers uh, and take the third root of them. So w can be all real numbers. It's allowed to be a negative in here. It's allowed to be a negative in here. There's no problem. It's all real numbers, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, that's as far as we can go with that one. Just double check. Yeah. Okay, division. So almost the same thing. We just have to deal with this special fact now. So when you're dividing two radicals, you divide the coefficients and you divide the radicands, just like before. Divide coefficients. Divide radicands. Uh, if you do that and it's the same index, you should be just fine. Um, as long as you have to pay attention to these restrictions. So in this case, there is actually a whole bunch of restrictions. We have our restrictions based on the root. So inside the root, um, the numbers can't be negative. Uh, if k is positive, then a can't be negative and b can't be negative. And that's what we have right down here. So this is the usual restriction that we had in the last part. If k is an even index, then a must be a positive number and b must be a positive number. If you have a variable there, then you have to make a restriction on the variable. Uh, but there's actually an additional restriction now where k is a natural number. Uh, if k is any natural number, so it doesn't even matter if it's positive or negative or even or odd. Uh, m, n, a, and b are all real numbers. n is not allowed to equal 0. If n was 0, you'd be dividing by 0. So this is our second restriction comes from you can't divide by 0, basically. So n is not allowed to equal 0, and b is not allowed to equal 0. Because if b was 0, the root of b, any size root of 0, is just 0. So both these numbers are not allowed to equal 0 as well. So two different sets of restrictions. Uh, this is going to be more for the 20-1s, but we should be pretty familiar with them. Uh, we just have to combine them together. And this becomes a big part of the 30-1 course. Um, you have to be able to state all the different restrictions and you get some complicated functions. So this is getting ready for that. This is, uh, it does start getting a little bit complicated here now. Okay, now the fun thing, rationalizing the denominator. So in the last topic, we talked about radicals in simplest form. Uh, radicals uh, in simplest form do not have a radical in the denominator. You are not allowed to have a radical on the bottom when it's in simplest form. We always need to get rid of that. Uh, and we talked about that in the trig unit. When we had something like 3 over root 2, we said that was not really allowed. We multiplied it by root 2 over root 2 to turn it into a um, rational or a real uh, denominator. The process of simplifying a radical to get rid of the radical in the denominator is called rationalizing the denominator. So this is the term that we use all the time for this. 
Uh, if the radical is in the denominator, both the numerator and the denominator must be multiplied by a quantity that will produce a rational denominator. Uh, this is the easy one. Uh, let's kind of hide this bottom one for a second. So for a monomial, if there's only one term in the denominator and it's a radical, you multiply the numerator and the denominator by that radical. That makes sense. Uh, in this case, if we wanted to get rid of root 2, you would just multiply both by root 2, and it makes it double as big, which is the size of 2. So the bottom ends up being coming 2. Um, every single time, if you have a radical in the bottom, you just multiply by that radical. Everything what's in, that's in the radicand and under that index, you multiply by. Uh, now the harder part is for a binomial. Let's actually do a little thought experiment if I can get some rough paper here. We'll do it on the back of this thing. Okay, so let's say you have anything on the denominator, it doesn't on the numerator, it doesn't matter. Let's say you have root two plus five. How do we get rid of a radical in the bottom this time? So I want you to kind of think about this. It is pretty hard to figure out. Um, you could try to multiply by root two. But that's not going to work because you have to rainbow it then. It's like you have brackets here. So you rainbow this and that would equal, uh, well, four root two on the top. On the bottom, it would be two plus five root two. So it doesn't actually disappear. You're just moving it around. So how do you actually get past that? Uh, the trick lies in differences of squares. So basically, you can think of these like they're square root too small. We want to actually square them both. We want to make them bigger. And if you remember in a difference of squares, if you had a squared minus b squared, uh, this turns into uh, a minus b, a plus b. So you can kind of break it down that way. Now, the great thing about this is if you were given just one of these terms and you want to make it squared times bigger, this is actually the formula to do it then. Um, so if you had, say, root 2 plus or minus 5, or root 2 plus 5 over here, if you multiplied it by this thing, everything will become squared times bigger, and you won't have to deal with this nasty middle term. This is basically a middle term. If you're doing a FOIL expansion, there's those two terms in the middle. They're actually going to disappear in a difference of squares expansion. So that's the trick we're going to try and do. We're going to be multiplying this by whatever this thing is, and we call that the conjugate. So let's read the rule, and then we'll try it. So the rule, for a binomial, if you have two terms in the denominator, multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate means the same thing with a different sign. Same, same, different. That's what makes it a conjugate. So basically you're reproducing a difference of squares and then going up the level. So let's try that. Um, the product, oh well, here's a full ex explanation. The product of a pair of conjugates is a difference of squares. So if you had two things like this, you would multiply them against each other and you would end up with root of u times root of u, which is just u, root of u times root of v, um, times negative root v, so negative root u root v, uh, root v times root u, positive, and root v times root v, negative root v squared, which is just v, sorry, negative v. Uh, so that's our expansion. The first term got rid of the square roots, the last term got rid of the square roots, and the middle two terms disappear. So the bottom in this case will actually just turn into u minus v, which is what we're looking for to get rid of these things. 
So we call these two terms conjugates of each other. Same uh, numbers, but different signs, conjugates. When multiplied, the radicals are then eliminated. So what is the conjugate of the following? You would multiply this by root 6, root 8, plus. That's it. If you multiply by that, it's going to disappear. Second one, you're going to multiply this by 5, root 7, plus. It doesn't matter if only one of them's roots or both of them's roots. This works either way. Okay, try the last one on your own first. Really easy. Root of 3t minus 4. So if you can find the conjugate, if you can multiply the con by the conjugate, you're going to get rid of the roots on the bottom. Uh, this doesn't make it a super easy process because you then have to multiply the top by this. So it is going to get a little bit complicated on the top. So that's why we need to be pretty good with the algebra behind roots because the cops, tops will get uh, somewhat messy when we do this. Okay, let's try this. Simplify each expression. Um, identify the values of the variables for which the expression is a real number. Um, so basically state restrictions. Make sure everything's open. Okay. So a lot of things we want to do. First, we want to simplify it. Then we want to rationalize the denominator. Then we want to state restrictions, if there are restrictions. Now this is a radical divided by a radical. They're the same index. So this actually can turn into the square root of 24 over 3x squared over x. We can actually pull these both on the inside, and both of these are going to turn into simple numbers for us. So this is going to be 8 root x. 24 divided by 3 is 8, and x squared divided by x is 1x. Okay, almost done. Now we need to simplify it. Uh, the denominator is fine, but the we can pull out a number. We can pull out 2. So 2 root of 2x. Uh, restrictions, because I can divide it by 4, which means a 2 on the outside is what that is. Hopefully you're starting to become very comfortable with this part, because if you're slow at this step, uh, then all these future lessons are going to take really long and be confusing. So if you, at the end of this lesson, if you're still slow on this part, go back, do lots of practice, make sure you get very, very comfortable with it. Uh, even 20-2s, I expect this all the time from you guys. Um, restrictions, x has to be positive. We usually do a comma, saying so long as x is greater than or equal to 0. Good. Next one. Uh, 4 thirds is just 4 thirds. Um, it doesn't simplify yet. We're just going to kind of leave it like that. Uh, 5n over 2. Uh, what can we do with that one? We could divide them right now, but that's not actually going to help. Um, so this actually doesn't simplify. So step one, I was looking to simplify it. Okay, so step one, I was looking to simplify this. The coefficients don't divide. Uh, they would stay a fraction, so they don't really simplify. The uh, radicands don't really simplify either. So there's nothing we can do to simplify it right now. So we're going to have to go right ahead and rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply this by, on the bottom, 3 root 2. And on the top, 3 root 2. Although I don't know why the 3 is there. We don't really need to multiply by the 3. Really, we could just multiply by root 2 over root 2. Um, but it doesn't hurt us either way. We'll just end up dividing by 3 later. So, we multiply. It's a single term. Multiply by that, and you'll get rid of the root on the bottom. So on the top, it becomes 4 times 3 is 12. 
root of 10 n. On the bottom, it becomes 9 times 2, which is just 18. 3 times 3 makes 9. Root 2 times root 2 makes 2. So 9 times 2 is 18. Okay. Uh, now we need to simplify this down a bit. Can we get rid of anything with the root 10? No, that's as far as it goes. Uh, but 12 over 18 simplifies as a fraction, and that goes down to 2 thirds. So that's as far as we can go with that one. Restrictions, n must be positive. Or equal to zero. Uh, you can actually solve this with inequalities, but hopefully you can kind of, whenever it's a single term, it's actually right straightforward. It's just either less than zero or greater than zero. All right, this guy, can we simplify right at the beginning? Um, no, it doesn't look like it. We only have the one root, everything is simple. Uh, we can't pull anything out of this root. The five is as far as it goes. So nope, this is as simple as it goes. We just have to tidy it up now, get it into good form. So we need to multiply by the conjugate. So first time we're doing this one. So on the bottom, we multiply by root five, seven minus. Root five minus seven. And on the top, the exact same thing. Because all of that is just uh, one. You're allowed to multiply by one anytime you want, and this is the same thing as one. It's just gonna tidy things up for us though. <coughs> Sorry. Um, okay, I like to multiply the bottoms first because that's the easy part. Difference is squares, so it's gonna be squaring the first term, which is five. Squaring the second term, which is 49. It's not 25 in the first time because when you square it, it just counters the square root. So squaring it just gets rid of the square root sign. It's used up by that. But if it's just a number, it does indeed square. And the sign is always negative in the difference of squares. Five minus 49, easy. Uh, now the top, 11 times root five is 11 root five. Remember this is all multiplication so you have to rainbow. 11 root five and negative 77. Good, so we successfully got the root only onto the top. Now we tidy up one more time. So this one tidies up to, uh, doo -doo -doo. what does the bottom become? Negative 44. We can pull the negative to the front. 11 root 5 minus 77. Uh, now, there's actually one more thing we can do in this one. Uh, we can take out a common factor in the top of 11, and that actually does divide the bo bottom. Or basically, every part of this divides by 11, uh, and that's what we're going to do. So it's still negative in the front, uh, but it becomes root 5 minus seven all over four. Everything divides by 11. Or basically you could pull an 11 to the front of the top and the bottom and then they cancel out is basically what we're doing there. Um, it seems like we could have left the 11 in the front but we didn't know we would have a factor of 11 on the bottom. So we didn't know that would happen at the beginning. All right. Uh, I think that's as far as we go in that one. Uh, I do like the negative in the front. I never like the negative on the bottom either for the same reason we don't like the roots on the bottom. We want our bottoms to look really easy because the bottoms are the hardest part of math. If you remember from your fractions units, finding a common denominator is really, really annoying. So we don't like to make a lot of work for ourselves when we're trying to find a common denominator. So we make the bottoms look as simple as possible. So if we have to add two of these things together, we would be able to do that. Um, because finding a common denominator with four is actually not too bad. But finding a common denominator with root five plus seven, impossible. So if we simplify it down, then we can actually go further with these things if we had to. 
Okay, let's try a couple more. If you're feeling ambitious, you could pause and try these ones on your own first. Uh, but I think I'm just going to keep on rolling. In this one, uh, this is actually really easy. So first thing we want to do is look to see if we can simplify it. And we can indeed do 51 divided by 3. Well, actually, I'm not sure. Does 51 divide by 3? It does. It's 17. So this is actually just 2 root 17. Um, basically, what we're doing is that division rule. The coefficients divide. 2 divided by 1 is still 2. And then the roots divide. So 51 divided by 3 is 17. So that one was pretty good. Uh, what about this guy? 2 fifth root of n. So we need to, we can't simplify it. We need to get rid of the radical on the bottom. So we're going to multiply this by a fifth root of n. Is that going to work? It's actually not going to work for us. They actually, I'm just going to look and see if they said this in the room. In the rule, sorry. Uh, no, this isn't going to work because a fifth root times a fifth root is just going to be a fifth root n squared. Uh, let me actually do that as an aside. So fifth root of n times a fifth root of n is not n. It takes five of them to make n. Basically, if you want to think about it with um, fractions in exponents, this is n to the fifth. This is n to the fifth. And when you multiply, you add the exponents. So in the end, we actually end up with n to the two fifths, or um, the fifth root of n squared. So we're still short some. We actually need a whole bunch more. We need four of them to get up to a whole number. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make it four of them. It's basically all we have to do. That's saying we're adding four fifths of it. We had one fifth of it, and we're adding four fifths of it. This is probably more of a 20 1 question. Uh, and then do the same thing to the top. So it takes four of them to get back to the original, and then we get to the answer. Uh, so two times the fifth root of n to the fourth, and on the bottom, four fifths and one fifth makes just our letter n. So that's that one. Uh, restrictions didn't have restrictions here. Didn't have restrictions here. This one has variable, uh, but it's an odd power. Odd power means it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, but we have the dividing as well. So in the top, n can be any possible number, but in the bottom, we have one rule, which is n is not allowed to equal 0. That's the only rule for us this time. So you have to watch a bunch of different things for these rules. OK, f. This one is a bit challenging, so you're going to have to do, I don't think, oh, it does actually simplify. And we probably want to simplify first. I do like to simplify first when I can. So first thing is we're going to call that 6 over uh, 2 root x plus 1. That's our simplify. Now we have to multiply by the conjugate and then simplify some more. So that's multiplying by the conjugate. I always do the bottom first because it's the easy part. Uh, 2 root x times 2 root x is going to be 4x. Because it's 2 times 2 and root x times root x, which is just the single x. Uh, do the back numbers. 1 times 1 is just 1. And it's a difference of squares. So that should be that. On the top. We're going to have 12 root x, and we're going to have minus 6. OK. And can we go any further than this? 
Um, well, we could common factor six out of the top. In uh, when you get to calculus eventually, we actually like to factor everything completely so we can see if anything cancels. Uh, so they would go to this step, 6 times 2 root x, sorry, x uh, minus 1, all over 4x minus 1. But since it can't cancel, um, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So if you leave it here, I would say that's probably fine. If you leave it here, that's probably fine. But if a number could be pulled out, which does cancel, if you could co-common uh, factor from the top and bottom and have those numbers cancel each other, then you definitely want to factor further. So this is good practice to common factor things out if you can. Uh, restrictions. Okay, so we're going to have a couple different ones. From the top here, sorry, that X really isn't very clear. That's just an X in there. From the top here, X cannot be a negative number. So we're going to have X has to be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, and that's the only restriction with the top. What about the bottom now? So the bottom is not allowed to equal zero. So we would also say 4x minus one cannot equal zero. So 4x cannot equal one. For x cannot equal one quarter. So there's actually a pair of things in this one and we have to write them all down. Uh, yeah, we actually, hmm. um, so in this one, I would actually do this somewhere else and then I would state the restrictions. So I would say X must be greater than or equal to zero and X cannot equal one quarter. If you subbed a quarter into this thing, you'd end up at zero here and that's not allowed either. So a pair of restrictions on this one and that's kind of hard. Okay, last two questions. Uh, I think I'm actually just going to do one of them. Yeah, they didn't do this one before. I think I'm going to do just one more. Try and keep this under 40 minutes. Uh, so, really quickly, does not simplify. Multiply by the conjugate. 3 root 5 plus 4. 3 root 5 plus 4. Multiply that out. So the bottom becomes 9 times 5 is 45. Uh, 4 times 4 is 16 and minus. The top becomes 6 root 5 plus 8. The bottom is 45 minus 16. 29, uh, 6 root 5 plus 8. Um, so we look to common factor. I know I can common factor a 2, but that won't come out of the bottom. So it doesn't really matter this time as much as it would in some other situations. Uh, but we could look at it like that. Okay, and this is just a number. So there's no actual restrictions. Um, the root doesn't simplify any further. No radicals in the bottom. Yeah, it matches our checklist. This can be very hard. Um, it takes a lot of practice to know where you're going with these things. What are the actual rules? Uh, why don't we actually, I still have two minutes or a minute and a half to keep it under it. So number one, uh, simplify. Um, so first you're trying to simplify these things by pulling numbers out of the roots or combining terms together. If you can combine terms together. Number two, um, rationalize. Rationalize. And then number three, you simplify some more. Because sometimes after you rationalize, you end up with something that can still be simplified. Um, so basically, those are your steps. And you're looking for um, all one term, if you can, if possible. Or basically, you want to combine as many terms together as you can. Uh, no radicals on bottom. And uh, simplified radicals as well. Simple radicands. 
Uh, so the things inside the roots have to be simple as well. If you can pull anything out of them, they have to be pulled out. Uh, and really, that's the that's a rule because of this one, because maybe there are terms that can combine together that you wouldn't see until you simplify the radicands. So that's it. Uh, Forty minute lesson, not too bad. Uh, there's a bonus video there if you want to do rationalizing the denominator, and then a whole bunch of homework. So you guys still have uh, what probably 50 minutes left in class to get a good chunk of this homework done. Um, this will take some practice, so make sure you're going home and finishing this homework. And there's an extra review sheet in the package as well. Okay, good luck.